D Nice. What's up, man? That is the perfect name. I never asked you, how did you come up with the name D Nice? You know, back in the 80s, everybody was ice. Mixed Master Ice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when we were recording our first song, South Bronx, Scott LaRock accidentally called me D Nice. Wow. And uh, I just kept it. Well, I used to be M Ski. You were M Ski? Because Nice Ski, <laughs> that's my tag up name. I was terrible in tagging, it would just be like a stick figure. Um, <laughs> What were some of the names that you had before? Like, before D-Nice, what were the uh, failed was, names? I was D-Money. That works, D-Money. Yeah, but that doesn't work during COVID. Everybody yeah. was, people were losing jobs. <laughs> nah, he rich, we, we ain't going on, we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna we're party not with him. D-Money. No, no, but nah, th that was it, though. I actually started in hip-hop, man. I was pretty fortunate. Like, the first thing that I did in hip-hop was work with BDP, so. How did that happen? How did you first start? BDP, Boogie Down, Boogie Down Production. Production. Boogie Down Production. KRS One. One. Yes. The teacher. The teacher, the teacher. Yes, the um, philosopher. I should love my philosopher. <laughs> But how, how did that happen? So, um, KRS, li KRS One lived in the men's shelter in the Bronx. Wow. DJ Scott LaRock was the social worker in the Bronx. My cousin was a security guard at the men's shelter. And I was like 15, and he asked me was to bring Was that Robo? Some... No, 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 Robo was, he was just down with the group. This okay. is my cousin, we called him. Shout dude. out to Robo, shout out to Robo. Show. Yeah, he knows Robo. Robo Cop. Yeah. But anyway, I walked over with some food, and then, you know, you know, he was like, hey, I want to introduce you to someone. And he introduced me to Scott LaRock. God loves you. God loves me, man. Everything God, that your, God your nickname, D Nice, just <laughs> happened, and then you, he gifted you the KRS one. Yes. And you don't want to know my struggles. That I, I'm like, I was a win, so my mama tried to get rid of me, but I lived anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sean tried to drown me, so did Kim, DJ Damon. <laughs> Keenan stopped me for a week, Damon beat me. Um, <laughs> and it just made me strong. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of you, though. <laughs> We're gay. <laughs> We're gay. But you know what's dope? Like, I love the fact that, like, my family, like, I never had to run with a lot of dudes. You know how you, you in the Bronx, whatever, you have to run with certain dudes? I never had to run with nobody. I got my brothers. I just let out one cuckoo, and it's a problem. <laughs> it's a problem. No, it's definitely. Um, let me ask you. Uh, I mean, we've known each other a very long time. Yes. We met on the set of I'm oh, Gonna Get You Sucker. I'm Gonna Get You Sucker. Yes. <laughs> I think we were like the youngest people on the set. We were babies. I had no hair. I looked like a shaved weasel. Like, <laughs> and you didn't have no hair. We look at look I at you. It. That's it with the D. Look at him. I wanted to rob you of that jacket so bad. Now look at me. <laughs> look at me. Yeah, I love this. That's yeah, we were, crazy. We were young. Look at Sean. Puberty was nowhere on that set. No, no, <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> um, but man, that, how did how did y'all wind up doing that? I know yeah, my brother called. Your brother reached out. My brother out. loved BDP. Yes, yes. yes. And he, then, he reached out to us. We were on tour with, like, Eric B. and Rakim. Yeah. I was young on that tour, bro. I was, like, 17, 18 years old. And we were, um, while we were on tour, Keenan reached out and said yeah. he needed, he wanted us to do the, um, do a song from, from the film. So I worked on the beat on the tour bus, and it ended up being a song used in the movie. Yeah, Jack of Spades. Uh, Jack, Jack, Spades. Jack, 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 Jack. Stop, we look old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Club Quarantine, man. You know, you really saved our lives with that. Right? Thank you. Yeah. Like... <laughs> this, this is the third year anniversary. It's funny, when you first started doing it, I would always show up. Yes. And I just wanted to shout out. I was like, you was like shouting out Oprah, and you were shouting out <laughs> Obama was in there one time. I was like, D, over here. Remember me? I'm going to just suck. I'm going to suck. And, and then one day he was like, Marlon Wayans. I was like, yeah, street cred. <laughs> Um, what do you plan on doing with that um, now? Oh, CQ. So the third anniversary of Club Quarantine, which is so crazy. Dude. We, we've been doing this for three years together. Um, it's next Friday. <laughs> Music, man. So, you know, we're doing this, the CQ three anniversary uh, next Saturday, March 18th, at the Apollo Theater. I wanted to bring it home. Okay, go. Um, yeah. And um, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. But, but I'm also excited that during the daytime, we're doing something really cool. You know, what affected people during the quarantine was, how do you save for a pandemic? So I'm doing something um, called the ABCQs, which is um, it's a financial literacy seminar during the daytime with Chase. Oh, okay. And to just kind of teach people about, you know, financial literacy and saving and building oh, wealth. Oh, that's dope. Oh, brother, yeah. you're talking about all your positivity. Come on, now.
I was like, I was like, how do you drink more wine than? <laughs> Mine was very simple. Um, you're into hip hop, and I wanted to ask a hip hop aficionado a couple things. One is, who's in your top ten? What's your Mount Rushmore? Man, I, one, I think it's unfair to have a top ten. You know, like it's, every every generation is different. But if I had to select ten people. Um, Jay would be, it would be Jay, Nas, yes, Big, yes. Um, uh, who else? Rakim. Pac, Rakim, yes. KRS, Big Daddy Busta K. Busta Rhymes, you gotta put Busta in there. I would put Busta in there. You gotta put Busta that's, in that's there. That's eight. I, I love Eminem, that's nine. Yes. And, um, you know, to be honest with you, I'm a big Queen Latifah fan. Okay. Oh. He's very politically correct. He was repping for uh, for International Women's Day. You smile. You smile. <laughs> I, I noticed you always got a hat on. Why? You got a nice head. You know what I mean? Ah, oh, man. You know. You got a nice head. I'm just saying, man. You know, like. I don't know, the hat became a thing. I've always worn a hat because I, I started to lose my hair prematurely, you know, like you so. You was on the set, uh, 16 like, years old, I losing started, your hair? I started what you losing my about? hair at like 28, man. I was wow. like, man, I'm, I, I need to wear a hat. I really didn't like the shape of my head. But the hat thing during quarantine was actually an accident. No, but this is cool. Like, it, you oh, got yeah, a, this is my no, vibe. you got a nice head. Like, some dudes, they ain't got a nice head. Like, oh. <laughs> like I don't befriend him because if he ever, ever see Neo without his hat on, I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you were thinking it. <laughs> Neil, Neil's a homie, but I have to agree with you. <laughs> Neil knows his head is messed up. Every time I see him without his hat on, I just want to load him in a gun. <laughs> um, we we all uh, lost uh, the hip hop community. Uh, we lost one. Uh, yes, yes. True Goy. True Goy to De La Soul. De La Soul. Uh, De La just started streaming um, their music, so please go make sure you check out De La Soul. The brothers are streaming now. Yes, yes. What what did De La Soul mean to you? Uh, De La Soul. What do they mean to me? Uh, yeah. What do you one, think they mean? Freedom. Like you, freedom hip -hop. of expression. Right. You know, they've always been free with their look, the clothes, the music, the lyrics. Yeah. They were always something different. Right. You know, so as J DJ Jazzy Jeff would say, we got a bubble wrap de la soul. Absolutely. You know, they truly are Absolutely. like amazing talent. You Absolutely. Know? And, um, yeah. I feel like, for me, De La Soul, like growing up in the hood, De La Soul, like there's, there's music, hip hop, a lot of hip hop, rock, cam, Eric B, was for brothers in the hood. Sure. De La Soul was for brothers like me that was trying to get out the hood. You know what I mean? Like, they spoke to, like, you know, the, the other side, like, you know, come on. I was trying to get out of the hood, too. So they were for me, too, man. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Don't tell nobody we punk. Don't tell Don't nobody. Don't punk my out of the hood. I was trying to get out of the hood, bro. <laughs> <laughs> for all the brothers that was getting chased <laughs> by the brother. That music, whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah. It, it sounded like that. It sounded, uh, that kind you know, of I soundtrack. I said KRS lived in the shelter. I didn't live in the shelter. I was, <laughs> you was like, I was, oh, that poor Negro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hip hop, uh, it's oh, been man. around 50 years. 50 years, man. Yeah, our, like our age, man, yeah. 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 50 years. Why do you think it had such an impact so soon? It's only 50 years. Like, rock and roll been around way longer. Hip-hop is pretty young. Why do you think it had such an impact? I mean, just from my experience being in hip-hop, uh, a lot of what I learned, you know, growing up that they didn't teach in schools, I learned from the records, you right. know? It was like, so I feel, you know, I didn't know much about, I'll be honest with you, I didn't know much about black history until I started listening to Public Enemy and Chuck D and KRS, you know, right. like, so I felt, I feel like hip hop was definitely like the, the CNN of like the inner city community, you know, and, and we kind of needed that. And I think it just resonated with all of these kids, you know, we started feeling rebellious back then. Like, right. that's right, you know what? I, I, I feel proud about myself. Yeah, it, That's what it made you feel positive. Made you feel positive. No matter how much negativity uh, we were going through, it just it uplifted you. Absolutely. It was I, always aspirational. Uh, as are you, my brother. Um, thank you for coming out. I appreciate you. I love you. Um, 
Thanks. Love you too, bro. Uh, what do you? Well, let me ask one more question before I go. Before you go, what do you think hip hop's going to next? Ah oh, man, I don't think that I, I can even answer that question. In the next know? 50 years, what do you think? It, I don't. I don't know, man. I just hope that it continues to grow. <laughs> hey, I gotta be honest. I'm like, <laughs> you don't know. I don't know what these like, motherfuckers gonna do. Hey, <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> be nice. <laughs>